Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundWeb Studios is the answer. SoundWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, it's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mo Sinzia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you love Missing by Mian Mo Sinzia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is a fast-paced and intriguing novel with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and the ones you love be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mian Mo Sinzia gives has garnered great reviews and even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many more. So grab a copy today, available on Amazon and more, Missing by me and Mo Sinzia. Also, The Mike Widener Show can be heard on themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash The Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Also, Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful gentleman who has had decades of experience in the entertainment industry. He's the CEO of MD25 Entertainment. Also uh, worked with um, Canopy Music for Jimmy Webb, included The Fifth Dimension, Tony Orlando and Dawn, Thelma Houston, and he also signed, yes, Black Sabbath, ELO, ABBA, and also set up the first UK publishing company for BMG and also worked with Soho Johnny's uh, Let Me Help Foundation, which was just on recently. And this guy just has a wealth of information. I mean, his wealth is up so high. If you need to get some advice or help, I mean, you got to just climb your way up to the top so you get this guy. <laughs> Bye, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio, somewhere in the East Coast, the very, very talented CEO of MD25, or is it... Um, MD25 Entertainment, the very, very talented John Velasco Mills. John, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. I don't know if I can follow on that intro. <laughs> <laughs> or, or follow your footsteps with all the uh, great experience you've had. And um, you basically, uh, you worked with uh, Soho Johnny's uh, Let Me Help Foundation, which has drawn great reviews. And um, also, you're CEO of MD25 Entertainment. You worked with uh, Canopy Music for Jimmy Webb, and you also has included Fifth Dimension, Tony Orlando and Dawn, Thelma Houston. You also signed Yes and Black Sabbath, ELO, ABBA, and also set up the first UK publishing company for BMG. And um, you also uh, you know, joined CBS Sings in the United States and formed MPI. And whew, boy, you just have a wealth of experience. And before we get to all that, tell us how I first got started, John. <laughs> yeah, I basically I get bored. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing we do have in common. It's you and me, and that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, like I was telling you, a mentor of mine used to say as well, it said better to be lucky than smart. And that's really being in the right place at the right time and working with some great people. Mm -hmm. It's um, you know, I just love. I mean, I'm the worst guitar player in the world. I can play the piano with one hand. And so I like to work with really talented people. And that's the fun of the whole thing is working and living vicariously really for, through them. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, just being very lucky, each step I made, something happened that I just fell into it almost. Um, <laughs> and some I had to work for, but <laughs> some of it was just just really good. I mean, I started off in the theater, so it was like, you know, it was the weirdest start. And then I moved into PR because I was at uh, Theatre Royal Drury Lane and there wasn't anywhere else to go. So it was like each little move I made, I was forced into it. And in PR, one day I was representing some incredible artists there. But uh, Jimmy Webb was introduced to me as a young songwriter, really not done much at that point. And we really got on together. And that's really when I moved into music. So uh, that was the start. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is so amazing. What was that one moment that precisely influenced you into what you're doing today? So in other words, what was that magic moment that simply said to you, whatever you're involved in, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my career? 
I, I think it basically was lucky enough again to be involved with Jimmy. I mean, he's such an incredible talent. I mean, obviously it's today and sitting, watching him play the piano, create music and then follow through and the number of artists that really loved what he was doing. And after that, there was really no turning back. I was like hooked on the whole songwriter experience. And that's why I got, I still think of myself really as a music publisher because it's all about the song. It's all about, the, you know, that's the basis to everything. It's the bank of the industry. And really no matter what I'm doing, there's publishing at the bottom of it all. It all begins with the music, mm -hmm. so, and, know, whatever it is. And, and speaking of music, who are some of your favorite artists, singers, and musicians growing up? Oh, that's really scary. It, it's so wide. You know, I love a lot of the older artists. It, it's, I mean, I even go back to, I love Glenn Miller. I mean, I love right back there. I mean, it goes through all the stages and there was a band, um, who I'm trying to hold, Young Punks, um, out of, out of I, think it was, I think it was Belgium originally. And they came up with a whole, it was like a really hip hop type band, but they started doing the Glenn Miller type arrangements in the back of it all, which was really stunning. And uh, so it's nice watching the older music as well, being absorbed into the young music. I mean, it, there's, it's, it's really a tough question. There's so many incredible artists out there, which I, I love. And it goes, you know, it, it's uh, James Taylor. I mean, it, it's a classic, Carole King. I still think that the tunesmiths are the ones you look for. And then you know, I did a show um, in Carnegie Hall a few years ago about Lead Belly. Wow. And very few people know about Lead Belly. And the exciting thing was to find out, I mean, one of the great quotes from George Harrison was, no Lead Belly, no Beatles. <laughs> and you realize that this guy all those years ago, I mean, Keith Richard, I mean, it's, they're all fans. They all, and so if you go back to where the music started, I think that's what I love doing. And then seeing it transferred into modern day music. Um, which I didn't know is sidestepping the whole <laughs> thing, but it's uh, it, it really it music is just carries on and it just sort of changes like a chameleon. But the basics are, are there, in no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like it as well. Tia talked about Lead Belly, and um, you know I've listened to their music. It's like you know you, you think about it, it's like who knew that the Beatles would be influenced somehow by Lead Belly? It's like who would have thought of that? Yeah, well, it, you know, Lead Belly influenced Skiffle. Skiffle was what they played when they were young kids. And, uh, you know, a lot of the thing, I mean, it, it's when you go into the number of people that have covered his songs, it was, it was an incredible project to do because the more you went out to um, Van Morrison, I mean, he did the show for free in the Arbor Hall in London, just wow. as a total fan. I mean, and it, it's that type of following um, and, and it's great to bring that type of music to the younger generation because they can play with it as well. You know, they can change it and move it. I'm doing a project now, um, yeah, uh, which uh, there's an incredible young artist that actually found a Jim Croce song. Oh. He'd never heard of Jim Croce. He heard it by mistake. Uh, his name's Charlie Black, and uh, he did this incredible arrangement of it which actually was on our streaming show for charity, but it's exciting stuff like that. They did never heard of him. Now he's exploring the catalog and looking, my God, he's written all these songs. Yes. And so, so it's really amazing. You never know who's gonna find a song, what they're gonna do. I mean, um, a guy that I've managed for years, Randy Edelman, I mean, it, it's, I mean, literally for, for years, he did a, a song called Woman on Your Arm and it was covered by Bing Crosby oh just before God. he died. It was, I mean, it was all people, wow. The, the last song he recorded. And then he did a, I mean, he wrote another so song called, um, oh God, Isn't It a Shame, which was covered by a, a lot of rap artists and won awards. <laughs> and it was a beautiful ballad, which just went click. It's, uh, and I think that's part of the excitement of the music industry that you don't know where it's going. You may think, you know, but then something goes sideways and it's, oh, there's something new again. I mean, I'm doing a project now um, with a band called Anime's X and it's a band of heavy metal musicians. 
and uh, yeah, um, Mike Becerra, Rudy Sarzo, and, and they're incredible. Um, and they came up with the idea of doing kid songs. Oh, really? In metal. Oh, and they did arena, they did the Disney songs in Japan and filled arenas. We were actually planning a tour here before all this hit. And it's a fabulous, fabulous thing when you hear like songs from Frozen done in metal. And of course, let it go, let it go, let it go. Pre precisely. I wish I could press the button and play it. Let it go, it let it go. <laughs> because it starts out this heavy thing and then suddenly you realize what the song is and of course the kids love it but the parents love it they go along it so it's uh again it's just having fun with songs and changing them and moving them around oh imagine could you imagine barn the dinosaur doing metallica or anything what do you think ozzy would do about that if a dinosaur came on stage well yeah, yeah there you go it's very close to all that it really is <laughs> and uh yeah, no, so it, that's what I'm talking about being really eclectic from loving Sabbath to loving it, it's music is music and it's what you do with it, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just love I, I love going to some of the shows in Brooklyn and seeing these unknown acts, what they would do with it. And uh, it, that's the, the fun thing is, is there's some real talent out there today. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this actually, even though they could play and they haven't got places to play and everything, I think a lot of them by by doing so much now, you know, on on the different uh, platforms, they are actually probably getting a wider audience on a world basis than they would have done just playing in the local clubs. Mm. And uh, that that is a good point you made, and we talked about this earlier too. That how COVID has changed everything. They worried about um, you know making money at the clubs, going on the road, or you know going from city to city to taking the experience. But you're right and what you put in perspective like doing shows like from your home your computer or say your living room your bedroom bathroom and i've seen um or her stories about uh guitars playing from uh their cat's litter box or something or maybe on a rooftop like they have the beatles now it's just like you can reach more people worldwide you know being on zoom skype or duo or facetime or anything yeah. or they do at a club and i and i think you really hit the nail on the head that something could be very big. Yeah, and it's making them very inventive as well. It's taken them into another domain. They're not just doing music, they're trying to do something visual to impact. And, you know, I've always told any artist, I mean, you've got to get in touch with the, the fan. You've got to make them like you, know about you, and have, have an interaction. And a lot of these bands would have never had that interaction if it hadn't been for what's happening today. Mm -hmm. And of course, and, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, and some of the new technology is stunning that's out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, it's really throw a stone and hit one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and could you imagine trying doing something like this maybe 20, 30 years ago? It's like, yeah, you'd be in a studio or you had a sub, uh, a huge um, soundboard. You had to get like ISDN. You had to get like those um, big desktops and you have to get one of those um, ribbon mics or one of those, um, those, those expensive shoes, yeah. like a thousand bucks. I mean, Imagine setting it up just for a conversation like you and me, and here we are. You can do it by phone. You can do it by um, laptop, and some are doing it by, on days in their tablets. And next thing you know it, you'll be doing it on your uh, Dick Tracy wristwatch. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, many years ago, seriously, about probably 12 years ago, there was a company called Rock Me TV, and the guy that owned it was very, very inventive. And he did this thing where he called me and he said, look, look what I managed to do. He had a guy down by um, the Hudson on his phone and he worked a way to broadcast it. <laughs> and he said, look what I managed to do. And it was like, but he couldn't work out how to do it. And he said, this is going to happen. And that was 12 years ago and no one had really thought of it. And of course, if only he had thought a bit further, he could have been well ahead. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's fun. I mean, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's also a who knew as well, too. And um, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, your illustrious career and also some influences and, um, you know, especially work with Soho, Johnny and a lot more in just one minute. First, to listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. 
Mention to Mike Wagner show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner show, international award-winning author, Mia Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two ta- ta- strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those who love will be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Grab your copy today. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbeam, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with the CEO of MD25 Entertainment and entrepreneur and, a, and, a, and of course, a, a veteran of the entertainment industry, John Velasco Mills on the Mike Widener Show. And um, he, we talked about all this technology and um, whatever else. I was going to get to a point as well that you talked about Rhett Leadbelly. One thing that made me thought of, like, you know, a lot of the blues, too, like Robert Johnson started the whole trend. Then along came Muddy Waters, the Rolling Stones, and current blues. I mean, who would have thought a guy down Mississippi, Robert Johnson, would start the whole thing? It's similar to what Leadbelly did in England. Right. It's, uh, yeah. And then, I mean, we were, t- again, I was having chats today about Toots Hendrix, which was, you know, the guy that invented the word reggae. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, uh, you know, and it's really sad in a way because he, Ben invented the whole thing and then was sort of moved to one side. But uh, I mean, he's brilliant and still going today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was so that was uh, someone else we've been talking about. And again, no one's ever heard of him. But when you think that he came up with that name, it's uh, and I, I, hopefully again with all this happening, people are doing these biopics and things which get people interested in the root of where things happened. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, and of course, nowadays they do it by uh, EPKs, electronic press kits. They want something instant. They want something fast. And, you know, something you've never seen like 20, 30 years ago. And the old way is doing it by mail or it's like you just scan or fax or anything like that. I mean, everything just travels so fast. And um, so does entertainment. It, it's funny. I got a big package the other day of a TV series on DVD. DVD, really? <laughs> and I, I had to get them on email and said, I can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can you, so they had to give me links to do it. It was, and when you think of it, that's how it used to be, big packages arriving. And, uh, but this, it was very funny, just had no clue. Mm-hmm. And he was wondering why it wasn't selling. <laughs> and, and, and of course, uh, you know, VHS was a big thing, you know, 20, 30 years ago that went by Wayside DVD. Now DVDs was a big thing around 2000, thanks to Fast and the Furious. And now those guys by Wayside and you got streaming services. Now the question is, what's next after streaming? Well, I love in a way that it's gone backwards to vinyl. I mean, because I was always DV, I mean, CDs never, ever cut it for me because I don't want to be told the frequencies I can listen to. I mean, they're cutting off top, they're cutting off bottom. Maybe I can hear further. Maybe, you know, you can hear lower. But it, it's it, going back to vinyl really gives you the full depth of what you can, anyone individually can purposely hear. And you get liner notes, which oh, is, yes. again, you know, I, I think that was a big thing that went away. And, uh, it's, I mean, it's doing incredible sales now, as you know, the vinyl is ca- catching up with downloads, which is scary. But uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have a piece and hold it and turn it around, look at the liner notes, and then put it on the shelf like a piece of art. <laughs> I, I, I think I had about a thousand albums at one point, but I gave most of it to my daughter as well, too, who's making use of it and kind of get back in the vinyl scene. She got me um, Queen, uh, what was it, Night at the Opera, and it was just like being a teenager all over again. I mean, I miss the artwork, liner notes, and um, those cool labels that you, that they put on. You watch it spin round and round and oh round. yeah, oh, yes. And then they tried square ones. Do you remember that? It was like <laughs> they tried everything, so it was only in the middle. But it, you know, it was again, it was just so artistic what you could do with it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really the fun of bringing it back because instead of just doing a download or you know, it's it's getting back to that is really fun. 
<laughs> and I remember reading about the square label as well, too. Like back in the 1900s, they did uh, various cuts and, um, you know, it just did in 78. And then the new technology came out that whoever did the 45 and the 33 and the third, it's like pack more music, but do it at a much lower speed, <laughs> you know, you know, that type. And, um, you know, it just makes you wish you had a 78 and just, uh, yeah, play it like that, chipmunks. But then you play it backwards and find out all the evil things they're saying, right? <laughs> 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 That's right. Oh, it's saying this, it's the devil speaking through. I mean, I loved all that. <laughs> I, I remember I did this at a uh, school as well, too. We we're um, checking tapes and records and everything. And it was a Muddy Waters record. And we we're trying to figure out what it say backwards. And it says, ah, fuck. <laughs> 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 like it wasn't aired or anything like that. But uh, we never dared do so. We lose our jobs. And then someone someone told me they played a Beatles record. And they inadvertently spun it backwards. Said, smoke up, smoke up, everybody F up and something. So. <laughs> well, I know on some of those, it was funny as well. Because if you use to read down the label, you know, they used to write notes actually on the mother that when they pressed it and some said some funny things and not many people ever realized what was actually written on there. <laughs> so it's a, you can have a lot of fun with those. The oh, sad thing is when they started making vases from it. <laughs> oh yes. And of course, you know, with some groups as well too, like um, the ones you had, had gotten on or worked with through Jimmy Webb, Fifth Dimension, Tony Orlando and Dawn, Thelma Houston, also, you signed, yes, Black Sabbath, ELO, ABBA, and um, all, all these people as well, too, and helped out with Tommy Boyce, John Denver, Davy Jones, and whew, the list goes on and on. And um, maybe just uh, give us a really good story, or two about uh, some of the artists you've worked with, some of those who've signed, and, um, you know, just something unusual. I mean, Black Sabbath, it's like everybody wants to hear how Black Sabbath got started. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of fun. Well, yeah, I moved to a company. Um, called Worldwide Entertainment, which eventually became Hemdale. A friend of mine was David Hemmings, an actor that no one remembers now, but he was great. And uh, they were the they were the signings. There were Medicine Head. There were some great acts there. And in those days, no one really worried about the publishing or any of that. So I set up the publishing companies for them. And I lived between London and LA. And so when they were touring out, out there, you know, we had a lot of fun. I mean. Uh, I'm actually working with Rick Wakeman again, doing some projects with him, um, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I mean, one of the funny Rick Wakeman stories is that uh, we were doing a big show at the Forum, or they were doing a big show, and the whole band was basically on macrobiotic diets, even in those days. But um, so um, he and I actually um, went to, um, we, we borrowed a car. I've actually lost you now. Um, and we went out to um, to a bar and got a steak and beer. Oh! And, and, and the funny thing was is that um, <laughs> there were people in the bar saying really bad things about him, saying, "Look, who does he think he are? He's trying to look like Rick Wakeman. Doesn't look at all like him." <laughs> Which was like because he had the hair down the back and the whole thing. So it was really, really funny. But, oh uh, my goodness! So I, I, for some reason, I've lost your video, but. Anyway. Oh, oh, okay. I, 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 I still, I still have you on at my end. And if, okay. Well, that's fine then. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I'm basically the one that's uh, recording the show. It's, um, you know, pre recording and everything. And um, yeah, you're good too. And so all can you hear me, we can hear you. And that's the magic of it too, by the way. So you can always uh, do things on the fly. And of course, there's always the phone and what, and whatever. Oh, yeah. and, um, and, and of course, I think you also, um, had, had worked, uh, let's see, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. I'm trying to, um, you know, read off. You had so yeah, they came. Um, there's a lot of there's a very interesting um, charity out there called I'm No Joke, which is um, through an, a big foundation called Creative Visions out in Malibu, and it was started by a guy called Andrew Cole, and he was really mistreated all his young life, and he basically became quite a well-known songwriter. And he formed this, um, this charity really to teach people about um, you know, being a bully was bad. But it, instead of doing it the standard way, he went to major artists and asked them to give them interviews. And every artist there, there were some incredible remarks from what had happened, whether it was Ozzy, it was Sharon, um, Sir Patrick Stewart, they all Jane Lynch, they did incredible interviews about this. Slash, 
I mean, people, you know, they all opened up and it's a brilliant idea because it's um, trying to get at the kids. He said, everyone preaches to them, tell them that these are real people that they admire saying this happened to me and don't do it to other people and don't let it happen to you. And I think that's a much better way to approach that whole pro problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, that, that was where a lot of people on this streaming show I did came on to support that as well. I gave him a whole segment to do it from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we were lucky enough, this show actually got in the top 10 of stream shows of the year, which is ridiculous, <laughs> but we had like 70 artists on. And again, wow. the whole idea was mixing well-known artists, you know, from Moody Blues from uh, 10 years after uh, to young artists just beginning. And the trick was balancing them in the production. So it wasn't like jarring as you move them through. But the young talent, I mean, we really a and would it really carefully. It was really, really good young talent. And a couple of them now had deals from people seeing the show. Wow. Which is nice as well. And uh, so it was just, that was the whole fun thing is mixing the old stars with the young stars, up and coming ones. And I think that's really fun mm -hmm. to do that. And sorry. And, and, no, and Go ahead, go ahead. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I was just going to say, and I, I like mixing up the different projects as well. So on one hand, we like Randy Edelman's doing film scores. He's done like 300 film scores about wow. from C Cousin Vinny to Last of the Mohicans, Gettysburg. It just goes on and on. The NFL um, football theme. The, yeah, so, so on one side, I'm seeing the classical type trained people. And on the other side, I'm seeing people that can barely play the guitar, but are coming up with wonderful ideas and great lyrics. And so treating right across the board of writers and artists, it, it doesn't get stale. It stays really interesting. And then you can put two together. And the, the nice thing about the industry and the majority of writers and performers really want to help the young people come on. Mm -hmm. and and, uh, and, and of course, too, that, uh, you know, back in the day, it was more of a cutthroat business trying to uh, cut the other guy out. And nowadays, with uh, changing times and what we're going through, now it's becoming more of a helping business. And that that's definitely is a good thing. We need each other to help each other. Like you help me, I help you, or you help Soho Johnny, I help, or he helps somebody, yeah. or, you know, whoever's listening to the Mike Wagner show or watching is out to help somebody. I think that's a big message right now compared back in the, the day where it, I'm going to be number one. Now it's like, we all need to help each other. Well, I think that's the, and that's the wonderful thing about Soho Johnny. I, mean, I came on to help him and work out what he was doing. And this is a really genuine person who's a businessman. And for years, with no one knowing what he's been doing, he's been doing pop-up shows and really helping the older artists, which is a lo another lovely thing. I mean, he's got two record labels now, and one is specifically for the older artists, the lesser known artists. And, you know, everything he does as well, something has to go to charity. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, making this big stream show was so important because this is the biggest thing that's been done. And really, if you like bringing him out of the cold into the, let me help is his foundation and it's really here. Mm -hmm. And that it donated money to um, the Prostate Cancer Foundation to the I'm no joke situation. And then a very local one, which is a Meals on Wheels, particularly for the older people with COVID, with a very focus on that, because unfortunately, John lost his mother this year or last year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again, this is a really fun, interesting project to be involved in, because that as well as growing and spreading out. But like I say, everything he does, why I love the guy is that it has to go to charity. Mm -hmm. um, and it again he could have been doing this in the background for years but this is an opportunity because of what's happening that bang you, you can, he can put it out there mm -hmm. and uh, no and i think even the established artists as well as the younger artists have the same problem now none of them are on the road none of them are working so it, suddenly it's not us and them one selling out to 10 million people and the other doing a club it's now none of them are playing which is sort of a leveler. So they've all got to think about where they are and what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, so there's a lot of things in a lot of ways that this terrible situation has actually worked in the industry.
Right. And, and do you think something similar, what you did with uh, Soho Johnny, is it going to be a, a brand new trend in the music industry? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm seeing more and more people doing it because um, in the music industry, most people are very lucky nowadays, particularly in the business side of it, because in, in any time the business, something terrible happens in the world, whether it's a war, family, whatever it is, the entertainment industry grows because people want escapism. Mm -hmm. And right now, I mean, Netflix, they're running out of product. I mean, basically <laughs> the studios aren't, no one's making it. Everyone's watching, so everyone needs content. Mm -hmm. So once again, the industry as a whole is really gearing up to more and more, much product as they can get. Right. And, and so from that side, it's, it's a build. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, go, go ahead. I don't go on, Kurt. No, but I was going to say, I was going to mention something about Netflix. There are so many titles on there. My wife and my kids and I even have a hard time trying to figure out uh, what to watch. There's so much of it out there and it's getting bigger and bigger. And you also got the other streaming services like say with Hulu, Tubi TV, and um, even even CBS, Disney and everything. Next thing you know, we're going to have like, what was it like? Um, One million outlets with uh, one million movies and um, who knows what's next? Yes. <laughs> I, I know we go through it and we binge watch, but then we have, I never know what we're going to do. Is it Apple TV? Which one were we looking at? Was it Netflix? Was it who? And it's funny because sometimes, you know, I switch to the television and I forget which one I'm looking at, which is <laughs> hilarious, really. And a friend of mine is just launching a horror push, something called Terra TV, which is a fun idea as well. They're, they're really sort of cheap and nasty horror pictures. <laughs> which obviously students and everyone love, but it, he's jumping on the bandwagon again. It makes a lot of sense, like more and more product. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, but uh, it's more information. I think there's a lot of informational stuff out there as well, like I was saying earlier, which wasn't there. And I think it probably it wouldn't have come out if it hadn't been such a shortage. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember that Bruce Springsteen song back in the day where he sang about 57 channels and nothing on the you know, these cable cable networks. It, it's like a thousand channels and still nothing on. And next thing you know, streaming services, there's a million outlets out there and there's still a million things going on where if it's uh, nothing on something on or everything on, I mean, it's expanded, especially from cable. I think about it. Whew. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> also I, I, I'm chairman of um, a charity called Rat. Um, it used to be called, we just call it RAD now, R-A-D-D. -D. It used to be recording artists, uh, actors and athletes against drunk driving. But I've been involved in that for like God, 12 years longer. And uh, it's a really, really good um, charity because it, it's, again, we, we just went back colleges and everything else. We have colleges involved in it and it's creating product for, for that and launching it. Years ago, um, Paul McCartney gave us Drive My Car. And uh, it was interesting. It was the first time he talked to Yoko after John's death because John's mother died from a drunk driver. Mm. And it, it's interesting. And so basically we, we've got a different, we, I get, we're trying to hit into the kids rather than give them rules. So our, our motto is really like, we know you drink, we know you do drugs, don't drive when you do it, which is like a reversal from what a lot of people say, like, you know, you drink, we're going to lock you up. Right. And it's like, and so um, with Drive My Car, it's still out there. You could actually, it's quite amazing. Every line, virtually, a different star did the line from actors to athletes to everyone, McCartney, of course. And uh, it's really a fun piece. And that was the, it, it was, it was a really piece that the kids loved. And we're about to do another one, I think. Oh, that's so. amazing. And, um, and keep us up to date on that. And we're going to talk about, um, you know, John Velasco Mills being the CEO of uh, MD25 Entertainment. And what's coming up for the uh, entertainment giant, John Velasco Mills? We'll find out in one minute on the Mike Wagner Show. We'll be back after this timeout. You're listening to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. 
Sign up Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Mosenzia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Mosenzia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and the ones you love will be the first to go missing. Check out the book on Amazon and ebook, Missing by Mia Mosenzia, has garnered great reviews and even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today missing by me and Mosin Zia available on Amazon. Also the Mike Widener show can be heard on the Mike Widener show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Widener show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with entertainment uh, legend John Velasco Mills on the Mike Widener Show. He worked with um, Soho Johnny's uh, Let Me Help Foundation. Also worked with Campy Music for Jimmy Webb. And um, also signed Yes, Black Sabbath, ELO, ABBA, and Sep the first UK publishing company for BMG. And you're also the CEO of MD25 Entertainment. Um, tell us more about that and the great company you're, you're with. Yeah, so uh, MD25 um, stands for Moondog on 25th Street. Um, <laughs> my, part <laughs> my partner, um, Pete Casco, had a company called Moondog, which it started out as an edit house then got more into working with the agencies and is really uh, a mini agency, if you like now, where they do everything from, you know, take a project from beginning to end and uh, have major, major clients. Unfortunately, I uh, had to change the name because Moondog in some areas means the devil, which we oh, found out when we were dealing yeah. with, uh, with uh, China and places. So anyway, it's now called Carousel. And uh, it's as he and I are partners in MD25, and that's why we, we kept the moon dog in there, although no one knows it. And uh, so we basically, we obviously have a couple of publishing companies. We do soundtracks for movies, but we also do full productions. That's where some of the ideas I was talking about that we're doing the biopics and stuff, um, that's all done through us as well. So we'll take a project, come up with a way to do it, shoot it as well. And um, we also got a major picture. We do post for a lot of things as well. And again, with publishing being in the background, we do the post on a special deal. So they have the music rights. So again, the music rights on everything is really, like I said, originally, that's what we're doing in every angle of the music mm -hmm. and uh, of the business, I mean. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that, so that's really Moondog. The good thing is we can do anything. Um, and the you know, clients of, of Carousel are like Pepsi and Victoria's Secret, Land Rover, Aqua, I mean, whatever. It just goes on and on and on. So again, it, that gives us a chance for the young writers and lots of writers to write music for the commercials. So it all dovetails in very nicely. And, uh, you know, and the, the briefs on some of this, they go from, you know, a few thousand on up to huge amounts of money. And so it's really nice, again, for young writers now, they can't perform a lot. So they can do these little briefs and just bring in money as, you know, as they do it. So it's oh. a really nice earning for young writers. Wow, that's amazing too. And uh, how do they get in touch with you to uh, get started? Um, they, uh, John at md25.nyc. That's, uh, that's us. <laughs> and. Uh, I know, so it's got a description of the company there. And yeah, we, we look at all areas, particularly um, we're looking at a lot of movies nowadays and doing interesting projects. And we love projects that have a, a charity angle to it at some point. Uh -huh. Because I think, you know, is that, well, for years, but particularly now, you can find a lot of charities out there that really need it. I mean, the next project I'm going to do is for, by accident, I found about this um, called Camp Marcella in New Jersey. Um, they're incredibly short of money. And it's a camp for blind and autistic children, mm. which is stunning. And the fact that no one supports them to me was just amazing. And so we're planning an event with Soho Johnny right now that we're going to plan an event just for them. Um, because the work they do is incredible. They have a wonderful camp and they look after all these children 
which uh, definitely need this, I would think, this escapism every summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and that, that's, you can look around and find things that are just being left out there. People, you know, people are doing um, charity deals for huge charities out there. But there's little tiny charities, that's why we did the Wheels on Meals on Wheels, that no one even thinks about or thinks of helping. Mm -hmm. um, part of the thing I did with the lead belly thing, there was a little school up in Harlem, uh, which is fabulous. And a lot of it, the kids say uh, their mothers are working all day, they've got nowhere to go. And they supply them with, uh, with everything they need and they help the mothers get jobs if they're out of work. Mm -hmm. And again, no one knew about this little charity. So, wow. And, what and that's what I, I find fun doing nowadays. And what are some of the other charities that you support as well? And some of the ones you haven't mentioned, you talked about, um, you know, the, the drunk driving and also the, um, the let me help anti-bullying blind and mm -hmm. autism. And uh, what other charities out there or causes you, you guys support? Well, we, we uh, cancer, obviously, which is, um, you know, obviously huge and prostate cancer in particular, because I also it hits with the industry because obviously it hits a lot of guys. And a lot of guys in the industry have it or have had it. Um, and it's a tremendous amount of people. And so they all want to help out as well. And so that's really a, a prime charity. I also helped a charity called SAVE, which is um, really a suicide prevention charity, which is a wonderful charity again. Um, and the, the strange thing about that charity is that not many people want to talk about it, where I would have thought a lot of people want to talk about it because, you know, more and more I'm finding people that know someone or I know, I know people that have committed suicide when the last thing you'd imagine. Um, so that was a very tough one to work on, which astonished me because I thought that everyone would rush out and help. But uh, so, uh, and like I say, if, if there's a good charity out there, we're really happy to help them. And that was the whole reason of um, doing Let Me Help, because instead of just doing one charity, um, which I'd been doing before as well, John had the idea of doing the foundation so we can actually give to any charity. So we do specific ones, but then if we find that there's money in there and we find someone that was desperate, we can actually give to that charity. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than saying, this is for that charity, this is for that. It's all for Let Me Help. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and so it's basically all these um, you know, charities combined into a foundation. Th that's correct. Yeah, that was the whole point of the foundation. So like I say, that we can give to any of the charities anywhere. And obviously it helps the donors to be able to get the tax write-off. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it helps everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing. And how can and how can people help? What can they do? They can do anything. They can uh, volunteer. They can donate. To, it's on uh, letmehelpinc.org is the name of the uh, is the website. And you go on there, donate. They can offer their services. They it, there's a bunch of stuff they can do. Is it will accept anything. <laughs> <laughs> so if they go to letmehelpinc.org, um, and they'll find all the information on there. Just drop us a line, and we'll see if we can help people mm -hmm. and, <laughs> oh excuse me here any future benefit uh concerts or charities coming up with the uh soho johnny's uh, let me help foundation or anything yeah like i said the camp marcella is going to be a big one which is is one of the prime ones we're working on right now okay and because uh, we do we have to do them one at a time because it, it's amazing the type of preparation it takes ahead of time to do a good show it's well, uh, you can't just do it Exactly. I know what you mean. And of course, we're here with uh, John Velasco Mills, the CEO of uh, MD25 Entertainment and um, a legacy in the entertainment industry for decades on the Mike Wagner Show. And just a few more things, John, and we'd love to have you back on in 2021 and beyond. You've been absolutely fantastic. What else can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond? Hopefully a lot of more fun songs and some of the new artists that we're going to put out there. I mean, we've got April Rose Gabriella is a big one that she'll be out and obviously Anna Mae's X is is the fun one <laughs> i certainly can't wait i'm looking forward to it ray i think i got that out on my calendar uh, with all this junk i got with these notes and everything else and uh oh my notepad and my phone's not working 
Okay. Like, God, bring, God bring back that paper and pencil. Believe me, God, old school. Yeah. <laughs> I still do that. <laughs> and in order to, I have a confession. I have a calendar, and also um, my dog got me a notebook to write notes in. How you oh, like that? that's a perfect one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Very creative. Next thing you know, I'll have one this big. You know, just like the Bible. Next thing you know, <laughs> <laughs> with you. <laughs> and, and, and lastly, who do you consider biggest influence in your career, John? <laughs> Thanks so much, Mike. It's great. All right. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in career? Um, we're not done yet. I love talking to you. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> wrapping up. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah. So I think we got here. So once again, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh, God. I, it still has to be Jimmy because he was the start of the career. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for him dragging me into that world. I would have still probably been in PR or the theater world. I, I would never have transferred it to music because I, I didn't even think of it. Mm -hmm. And so it, that has to be the biggest influence from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, and I mean, production wise, the biggest thing I ever did, I did the first tour of India. I spent a year in India and that really throughout through my entire career has to be one of the most fun, exciting and uh, educational things I ever did to go to a country that didn't know about staging or anything. Wow. And uh, it, it was an incredible. I did all the way we did. Um, Delhi, Bangalore, Madras, Calcutta. We went right round. Uh, and it, it was, uh, and of course, Bombay in those days. But uh, so from that point of view, that was probably the biggest thing I ever did that affected everything I did from then on. Mm. Because it was, it was really starting at ground zero. Mm -hmm. And that's very amazing. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point, John? Basically, not to think it's easy. You've still got to work at it. I think a lot of people nowadays think it's the quick route to making money. And it's really the quick route to tearing your hair out and being totally frustrated. Uh, it, it's also doing the homework. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing the young artists I meet that are really starting up on their career and moving. Starting, and I talk to them about basics and they have no idea. Really? Uh, and... It, I, I think that's really, you know, what a lot of young artists to do before find out about the business. It's not just fun and, you know, doing a performance and getting lots of fans. There's a business side to it that if they do it wrong, they're going to miss out on the best part of why they're doing it, which is is making the money and creating a, a fund for their retirement. Exactly. And that's a very good point. Once again, John Velasco Mill, CEO of MD25 Entertainment and a legacy in the entertainment industry and a Mike Wagner show. John, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. So keep us up to date. Love to have you back. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people um, just check you out or uh, get a hold of you for uh, charity work or yeah. anything? Yeah. So the charity side is let me help Inc. Dot org. Uh, my company is, or my email is john at md25.nyc. And md25.nyc is my website. So they'll find out everything they need there. We will certainly do that. John, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2021 and beyond. And don't forget to keep in touch. And you've been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. It's been fun, Mike. Thank you. <laughs>